Hey everybody, welcome to yet another episode of Back to the Light. I am your host, J.D. Rieger. With me on this episode is my friend, musician, songwriter, Bon Vivant. There you go. I'll take it. Mark Edgar Stewart. Man, it's good to be here, man. Thanks for coming to my house here. Oh, thanks for having us. Absolutely. I, I like doing these on the road, actually. I like coming to, you know, into invading people's workspaces and stuff and, you know, seeing their double neck guitars. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that wild, man? They, they call that a chipson. <laughs> so it's not quite a Gibson. It's a, it's a counterfeit, ch- cheap, fake Gibson. It even has a serial number on the back of it. Yeah, yeah. It still has the logo and everything. I know. So it's, it's kind of like it's my Jimmy Page guitar. So I'm, I'm going to whoop out a, I'm going to whoop it out one day, play a gig. So, so be able to look out that thing. You know, you don't generally rock hard enough. I would, t- you know, and you're no. or not, I mean, you know, to, to need a guitar like this. I don't. I, I want to rock, man. I'm a closet rocker. I've always rocked until I started writing my own songs and then I got all sensitive. But, but, uh, no, I, I, I want to rock one day. Hold me to that. I will. I will. And, and I will whoop out the chips into the day I do it. You have <laughs> cultivated what I what I've written down here. <clears throat> a very adult career Ooh. C- compared to a lot of musicians that I know. Okay, okay. You know, I know a lot of people that, um, you know, like I come from a very punk rock world. You know, sleeping on floors mm-hmm. and uh, you know DIY touring and releasing and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, just looking at like the kind of places you play, yeah. You know, you play the green room. You just had a very successful show there. What? Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, December. Yeah. In December, yep. Um, you play like the Halloran Center. You've played the Packs, like your your G Pack, haven't you played? Yeah, a that's. See, you play a higher class of room. Pushing fifty. That's just sort of that. that that's not on purpose. By I'm forty. The way. I'm almost forty five. You're not that much. Older that's than just me. sort of where where it's just sort of headed. But I haven't been driving the bus. It's just been fate, I guess. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, was it so? It wasn't an intentional effort to 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 play to a more adult, a more refined crowd? Man, I guess, uh, uh, I mean, if, if I'm just going to be honest, you know, I, I heard Garrison Starr say this once, uh, you just got to go where the love is, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I felt like that's kind of what I was doing, you know, and and and, and, and know my audience, and, and they, they show up every time, and, and, and that's kind of, so I, I say it was by accident, but yeah, I just kind of, I kind of, my, my crowd's kind of getting older with me, you know what I mean? So I kind of have to follow them a little bit, you know, and, and yeah. try to make the most of it, so. I, that probably doesn't sound very cool. Well, no, I mean, it's <laughs> hell cool. Who cares? I mean, when you're uh, able to play like really, you know, beautiful places like that and yeah. make money doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the music, like Who's you to said, say what's cool and what's not. Is it cool to be like starving and playing yeah. for nobody? At, where, at yeah. The my bass lighter? playing days, I, I did all that, you know, and slip on floors and rocked and did the buck every Friday night. And those are some of the best, best uh, times of my life, you know, but but yeah, when I started doing the singer songwriter thing, there's definitely kind of more of an audience for it. It's more of an intimate kind of deal. People want to listen. They want to, you know, they 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 shut up and look at you and expect you to tell them a story. So yeah, there's kind of comes a, off the territory. There's more you know? of a direct connection with the yeah. audience and a give and take. And I mean, I remember when you opened one of my CD release shows, and uh, I guess it was at DKDC, and someone like you got. You know, someone came up, one of your fans came up and put like a hundred bucks in the tip jar. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of, you know, I remember being like, one, a little jealous. Yeah. And two, just like, wow, that's, that's, he's really cultivated like a very different scene because the kind of people who come to rock shows don't, are not shelling out, pulling hundreds out of the, they're not out of their wallets (laughs) for the tip jar. (laughs) They're not, but, but yeah, I've just been lucky, I guess, you know, but, but yeah, people, that there, there is an audience who, who kind of likes this kind of music and, and, and likes that kind of intimate vibe, and, and, and they come out, and they and they're pay for it, you know? So so I just started gigging a little bit differently, you know? Instead of just playing all the typical clubs or venues, I always just wanted to, like, try something that maybe wasn't a venue and, and, and make it a venue and give people another reason to want to come and not make it just any other show. Like when I played uh, at Sun Studio last year, I did a show there. It was just like... Just trying to think of neat places to show up and, and do my thing and 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 keep people coming because you know if you just keep playing all the time at the same place and I noticed my crowd was kind of getting a little thinner and that was a few years back you know and like man I gotta I gotta start 
trying to think outside the box more, you know, especially when we keep playing in Memphis. I'm trying to keep it kind of creative, you know. Yeah. So. You seem to really have a connection at the green room. Your shows do well there. I know I've seen more than one sold out show of yours there. Yeah, that's that's I like that place. You know, to be honest, man, when when, when I first uh, uh, heard their game plan, you know, I wasn't too sure. I was like, what? Y'all going to sell advanced tickets in Memphis? Well, good luck with that. And then it wound up being it's, it's awesome. And and it's really worked for me. You know, like people. People they they will pay for a ticket, and if, if you they, they they buy a ticket on X date, then they're showing up. You know what I mean? So there's it's kind of nice to the whole advanced ticket thing. Yeah, it works for me. You know? Yeah. And then you and then you actually know if people are showing up or not. So that big surprise, you know. Remember the old days, you do a big release oh, it's, show, and you're it's like, nerve wracking. Yeah, who's showing up? You know, and then you know, here you are, man, and, and no one's there yet. And you're freaking out. But of course, people start to show and, up halfway and that's, through. But. And that's how things get so ridiculously late. Is yep. like the way, like, oh, do we? No one's here yet, so we push it back, and then the crowd shows up later. So then the shows get later, and it just mm-hmm. round and round it goes. Yeah, that, that was the thing that started kind of bugging me too. You know, um, um, well, was the whole late show deal? You know, because I, I was part of that world. You know, and it's like, man. Sure. There's a whole audience here who, who who would love to go see a show at seven o'clock, you know. And that's when I started doing the early that's, DK shows. I've been saying you know? that to, to people for years, but I swear I don't think people, you know, maybe other than you, believe yeah. me. But having lived in Chicago for five years, you know, I never went to any shows that started any later than like eight or nine o'clock. It's a weird Memphis thing, you know, like no shows, and I never like left a show later than like twelve or twelve thirty. Yeah, you know, and sometimes shows aren't even getting really getting cooking around here until mm-hmm. then. Yeah, when I play gigs out of town, it's it's always 8 or 7 o'clock, you know? Like, yeah. this whole Memphis thing, uh, 10 o'clock, then wait till people show up and play at 11.30. It's and then, weird. And then that's the opener. And then, and, and then you, you know. and you wonder why it's hard to get people to come. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I kind of like the whole green room thing, you know, of, 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 of advanced tickets. And it, it, for me, it works, you know? So. Well, let's talk about things you've been up to in the last year i know one thing uh, you mentioned before we got started is you're working on a new album right mm-hmm. yeah i've been slowly working on a new record kind of kind of taking my time this time something i've never been able to do so i'm kind of excited about that you know no pressure you know just kind of doing it on my own you know and and kind of letting the the universe produce it so uh do you have any particular inspire i mean you've made what some might even call Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. concept albums or yeah, you know, very yeah. specifically inspired albums. Do you have anything that's driving you this time? Yeah, there's, you know, in the past, a lot of my albums have been really kind of self-reflective or pretty personal. You know, that last one I did was just sort of a happy record on purpose, you know, after COVID and stuff. But, but yeah, this one, man, I'm, 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 I'm really taking my time. I'm doing it myself for the most part. Uh, Will Sexton's producing, uh, and, and, and doing it at Bruce Watson studio. So there, there really hasn't been a whole lot of planning, you know, like when I say the universe is producing, it's like, I just get a text out of nowhere and be like, Hey, tomorrow you want to go record? And I was like, who, who's in the bands? Like, uh, find somebody. And I'm on my phone <laughs> trying to line up a rhythm section last second, you know? So, so then the session winds up being just whoever was kind of available that day, which is kind of cool. Cause it's made for some, some really interesting combinations in the studio, you know, like, like one being, uh, uh, I think the session before last wound up being Sean Jorn on drums, Greg Cartwright on, on guitar, Will Sexton on bass, you know, and that was a great little studio band. And then, oh, oh no, Amy LeVere on bass. And then Will's was back there producing, and that was a killer little band. We did two songs, you know, with that, with that, with that lineup. So, so it's kind of neat to not plan too much and just sort of let the world kind of <laughs> dictate what's going to happen in the studio, you know. Yeah, it, it, you have you have mentioned to me a few different times wanting to record a, a more lighthearted record. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I think you said your last. Even though, don't you have a you have songs about death on your last? Yeah, record yeah. I mean, that's got fish in heaven and, and coffin half full, which is kind of a funny song. But that last record was definitely kind of lighthearted. It was just it was thrown together pretty quick. I was going to say it's still it's still pretty dark actually. Yeah, but, but it's, you know <laughs> that that's one that that, that Reba Russell and Don Hopkins produced and. And it was great. I love it. You know, it was just that moment in time. That's kind of what I was doing. It was just yeah. really, we did it in two days. Boom. Done. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it was a moment in time and, and I stand by it. I like it. And, and this time I'm just, I'm just kind of taking more time with it and get more an interval, you know, like those lots of sounds, you know, is being more lighthearted still on your mind? To be honest. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of feel like I might, I'm kind of going back to I don't know. I think I have a lot of things to sing about on this next record. You know, there's, you know, life's. There's a lot going on in the world to say nothing of what 
might be happening in your personal life. Yeah, yeah. Like life is just sort of kind of taking a few turns past year or two, so it's inspired a lot of these songs. So, so you know, I always said I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna get away from the whole you know kind of sad singer songwriter thing. But but uh, this next record is gonna have a lot of a lot of life in it. But it's gonna rock too. You know, there's lots of electric guitar. But I don't have a chips in yet, but <laughs> there's lots of electric guitar. Yeah. Do you have any kind of timetable? I don't know. I, I hope this year. I'd, I'd love to like maybe have a show this year, and and we're 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 almost done. We're just kind of kind of mix a few things, and and uh, maybe maybe the end of this year. You know, I'm I don't know, I'm really excited about it though. We we that's another thing I've never done before is we we, we go in and we record. This might be too much techie talk for listeners, but but we go in and and record a song with that band, and then we mix it the same day, and we're done. Oh wow. So, so the whole record is no re- been, no revising. You're not going back and changing for the most part. Like it's been real. That's just kind of that's kind of how cool. how Will and Bruce work. It's like we got the spirit, we got the moment, we captured it. Boom! Everybody go home. Let's mix it. And it's been kind of neat. So so now we're up to like ten songs, and for the most part, every song has been recorded, dubbed, and mixed that day. So it's almost like there's kind of a, a little energy to it all that you don't lose and just overthinking things, you know? Yeah. So that's been kind of nice. I like that approach. Yeah. Just. Do you think you'll do vinyl or, or absolutely just CDs this time? Yeah, yeah, definitely vinyl. Um, I, I didn't do vinyl last time, but but this time around, like I said, I'm. I'm Have you I'm, done it before? Haven't done vinyl. I did a 45 once. I did a okay. little single called "Don't Blame Jesus," and I I own that. Yeah, I did that like but, a long time ago. But your LPs have been CD only. Yeah, well, yeah, and digital. Yeah, the the, the Mad Jack was doing mostly CDs, and then the CDs fell off, and and then. And uh, like I said, they haven't done a, C- a, a vinyl uh, a record on me yet. And I I'm, thought, I'm, you know, I was honestly hypothesizing that maybe, um, you know, because you play to a, a bit of a different crowd, I was wondering if maybe it was more of a CD focused crowd enough, than than vinyl buying. That's and another you, thing, man. Um, every crowd's different, you know. Well, when I go on the road and play, I still sell CDs. It's crazy, you know. And and and. Well, I think a lot of people are turning back to CDs, or I think they did because you know for a while it was really hard to even make records. Yeah, it's not really the case anymore, but it was, and I think a lot of people turned back to cassettes and CDs because of that. I've got a closet full of forty fives in there, and and I think I sold like fifty on my release show, and I think there's probably another. I think that's all I've ever sold. I can't. Well, when I do my shows, I I can't really sell those forty fives. It's weird on the. Do road, you think you it, it, maybe it was because of the the subject matter on that? On I think that you might be on something there too, you know. But <laughs> but I think you're definitely on something about about, about a, a, a little bit older crowd, you know. It was, like, the, do it was the "Don't CDs. Blame Jesus" song. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, but don't blame Jesus. So so probably a little bit of that too. But, yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely doing vinyl this time, and and I'm looking forward to it. And I've already got like a a visual concept and all that and we'll see what happens. Oh, that's cool. Do you know who's going to be doing the artwork or? Uh, yes. Um, 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 it's a guy from, from Oxford, Mississippi. I forget his name. Uh, I was about to text Bruce and say, who's that guy who does your artworks? He's really awesome. Um, I, I do, uh, uh, you know, Bruce Watson has the, 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 the Bible entire gospel thing. And I play bass and that stuff. And, and he's got this new guy who, who, who does, uh, does his art and did the new Elizabeth King that's coming out. And I'm like, I want to get that guy. And it's real kind of like cartoonish, retro, incorporates real photographs. And like, like I'm kind of, that's the visual I'm kind of seeing, you know. So that's, anyway. I want, I want to, all I know is I don't want my picture on the cover of this record. Yeah. I just want something cool. I want to, I want art or something. You've done, you've done yourself on the cover before. Yeah. And then it's never my idea. It's always like, hey, let's get your picture and do this. And it's like, you know, the first, <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't want my picture on the cover of the record anymore. Plus, you know, I'm no spring chicken either, you know, but, but. Next record, I'm, I, want, I want a photograph or some art or something. I might hit up Steve or somebody. Give me a photograph. I just want. I just want. To be you know, a I'm, piece a, of I'm art, a wrestling you know? photographer now. You could you could hit me up too if you need to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But maybe I need a wrestler on the cover or something. You, you know? could. You can come down. We can get you in the ring. Dude, well, I got, I got to get the gut for well, it. Oh, you don't right have here. to take your shirt off. off. Okay. Okay. I'll take my shirt off though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. We've got some baby oil. That might Ooh. help. Okay. Oil you up, get get that wrestler shimmer on you. Yeah, or help help fit into those britches, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're working on a new album, but you've also been working on a lot of you know producing gigs for other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pr- you've been producing other people, and then you also do side musician work. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I know you did uh, one of the records we sold the most of in 2023 at Shangri La Records, whose shirt you're also wearing is a record you produced by Bailey Bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm doing the producing thing, and that, that's something I've kind of dabbled with in the past. We have sold so many copies of that of really? that record. Oh, yes. Good. I mean, probably the number one selling Memphis product of 2023. Good. Yeah, that's yeah. good to hear. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. I was real proud of that record. You know, we just top five for we sure. We just did that record on a whim, yeah, out in a barn at Dickinson's place, and we just set up a few mics and and we just went for it. And then talk about that the record was done in two days. You know, and I think it really kind of we kind of captured something. You know, and I was real proud of that. And and we're working on a new record now, Bailey, and uh, and we're kind of doing that partly with at the Shelby Foot Mansion and the other half at the uh, Matt Ross Bangs place, Southern Group, Crosstown. Yeah, Crosstown. Yeah. So yeah, her new record's definitely gonna be a little bit more refined and a lot more grand and bigger, and you know, it, it's pretty awesome. I no pun intended. It. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did how did you even you know how did you get into this producer game? Because I mean, certainly you have a lot of studio experience over the years, but yeah, uh, um, you know, what, what made you think you could you could run the show? I don't know. I guess kind of. I'm probably gonna shoot myself in the foot here because. I've I've, just, I've been in tons of bands and 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 I don't know I, I always just sort of felt like I had a knack for like arranging, you know what I mean? And and I've been in a whole lot of bands where, where you know that I was I was kind of be the one who wound up kind of arranging the songs. You know I wasn't writing them, but be like, all right, this is what we're gonna do, you know. And and then you know and then it was just that, kind of that be job like, usually falls to either the bass player or the drummer generally. Yeah, that that was kind of me a whole lot, and a lot of that was me and our grows, and we were a rhythm section for everybody. It would always just. Me and Johnny always kind of had the ideas, you know what I mean? And, and and not not all of them, but for the most part, you know, like the feel, hey, let's try this here, this, that here, and then everybody else kind of falls into place. So it was always kind of kind of natural to me, you know? And, and I think the first thing I officially produced was uh, that, that James and the Ultrasounds record, the first one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bad to be here. And, uh, uh, and that was uh, that was the OG lineup with, with Johnny and Luke White and Tall David. And, yeah, it was, that was a killer record. Oh, was, yeah. First thing I did. I think I wrote about that when it came out. Yeah, yeah. The record still holds up, I think. I could be partial to it, but but so I did that, and, and then I did And then a, from there, you just start getting phone calls? A little bit of both. You know, I was just, me, I was just, I was real kind of particular. As if I was just saw something I kind of liked and believed in, I'd be like, hey, you haven't made a record yet. I want to help you make a record, you know? And, and that's kind of how it starts. It's real, you know, it's not like, hey, I want to go be this. It's just, just kind of, I'm into what somebody wants to do, and I want to kind of be a part of it, you know? What what do you see your role as producer? Because a lot of, you know some producers are also engineers and they're very hands on. I mean, is that are you running the boards? No, no, no I'm not an engineer. Thank God. Uh, uh, with me, like I was just explaining to somebody yesterday, I just feel like I'm just sort of the the painter, and you have all these colors on the palette, and I'm just going to figure out how the painting works. You know what I mean? So so I, I I'll hear the person or hear the songs, and first thing I'll decide is like what engineer would be best. You know, and because you know not all engineers are the same. You know, and so if I'm going for more of a a uh, twangier, folkier kind of approach, I might pick this guy. If it's going to rock more, be a little bit more kind of pop, I might pick this guy. And then from there, I kind of pick the musicians, go through all the songs and the demos and try to suggest what I think are the strongest 10 songs, you know. And then, yeah, it's just sort of like assembling the team. I just consider myself more of like the, the general manager dude, you know. And so I'm not, I don't really get too up in their business, tell them how to sing or how to play their stuff. I just okay. Wanna, yeah. I was, I was curious if you were like, you know, digging into the, you know, you should come in here Yeah, or, you know, a little bit. Like the, the beat should be more like this or yeah, that everybody's, kind of stuff. everybody's different. You know, um, um, uh, when I did the, the Jed Zimmerman record, uh, that was really hands on, you know, cause he, he's a good buddy of mine. He just writes amazing songs and, and he just came in with songs. That was it. And he didn't really care to do anything else. Like, well, here's my songs, whatever. And he would literally would go in there and we would like track the entire album and then he'd come in and just sing it all, you know? So, so I was real hands on on that. And then, like, with the thing I'm doing with Bailey right now, um, first record, you know, it was pretty much, she just kind of let us do our thing. But, but, uh, she, she's actually co producing the second one. And, uh, I mean, she's come a long way in three years. Like, she's, she's got ideas and they're great ideas and she's calling the shots. So there's a lot of, there's a, we're kind of co producing. Yeah. So with that, you know, I'm definitely kind of, kind of a little more letting her kind of do her thing because she, she knows what's up. She doesn't need too much guidance, you know, like she can kind of navigate quite well the studio, you know, so. And and you work with her brother some too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just got finished making a record with Wiley and uh, yeah, that record's going to be awesome. So it's already done. It's all mastered, ready to go. And, and hopefully that'll be out in the spring sometime. And we did that at the Shelby Foot Mansion with, uh, uh, with Danny Banks on drums or Matt Ross Bang on guitar and. And I usually play bass and everything I produce. It's just cheaper that way. Yeah, I feel so. that. Uh, I said nothing you're producing. You're just sort of the general manager. You got to work within all the budgets and all that. And like, no, I, I I did the last Subteens record, yeah. and you know I ended up you know chipping in a little bit here and there yeah. as as you do. Yeah. 
So you got X amount of dollars, and he's like, all right, we got to like make this work within this little budget. So sometimes you're like, well, if I play bass, then we're saving grand right here. You know, yeah, so it's, I get to keep that money. Exactly. <laughs> you no. Know, if there's a little more more money, then I can call in Landon Moore and all the other cats. You know? uh, oh, um, and you also did a record on Andy Ratliff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I've known Andy for a long time, and man, he's just a little treasure that a lot of folks don't know about. He's from Coldwater, Mississippi, and he's played in a lot of great groups. And he's people kind of know him as 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 the bluegrass guy, you know. But uh, Andy's he's kind of a rocker, man. He's sort of like like Bill Stanley meets meets Jimi Hendrix and. <laughs> Dudes from another planet, Arl Burnside, and it's like Andy. When we're going to record those songs, and that record been the, been the works for like ten years, and we finally made it happen last year, and it, it rocked. It was great. You still doing a lot of side musician stuff too, like not as the producer, but just coming in. Playing yeah, bass. not as much as I used to. Like I, I still back Bailey on bass, and I'm playing with Wiley this uh, Saturday at Rail Garden, uh, playing guitar, which I don't get to do. I don't really get to get my guitar chops out much. But that's gonna be fun. And then uh, uh, who else? I've been working with uh, Alexis Grace a little bit. We uh, uh, we wrote a Christmas song a few months ago and we recorded it. It came out awesome. Alexis Grace, that's the she was on American Idol, right? Yep. 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 And she's one who who sang with me up at my at my Christmas show. She, she used to come in when I was working at the Music Foundation. It was when she was on her like run on mm-hmm. American Idol, and I remember her coming in and just like singing in the room something like she just you know bust out a little natural woman or something she got it man and i remember just thinking you know the takes it takes you know to just walk into an office and start singing a cappella into a room of oh. people sitting at their desks takes a certain amount of uh you know inner strength that i i, I admire she's bad at it. She's, she's awesome I, i've enjoyed working with her you know she's coming over tomorrow i'm gonna try to write another song but yeah she she approached me I, I don't i forget how through instagram and hey let's get together and try to write a christmas song and like i said i'm i've never really done the whole co-writing thing that much but i've kind of been doing it here lately and it's been fun and that was a co-write we did and it came out really great and it was a christmas song and it was just the right amount of cheese but just the right amount of coolness and we recorded it and it's going to be a, a single next year hopefully you know that's cool it's called christmas time is now you you do <laughs> uh you've done a few christmas songs haven't you yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait. Well, if you count that, if you count the ukulele band I was in, we did a. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a Christmas EP a few years back for the for the uh, Phillips record label. Plus, you did a. I think you did a Christmas song for one of the Christmas compilations that Jeff put out or that oh, I put did, out or something. Did I? Hold on. I think you did. Uh, yeah. Was was that a. Was that a Christmas song, or was that me playing with with Robbie Grant with Vending Machine? I think Maybe he so. did a he's he's a he's a yeah. very prolific Christmas performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Robbie's the best. Well, that's fun. Uh, you know, do you ever like you play a lot of shows as a as a solo act? Mm-hmm. But I mean, have you ever thought you know, do you want to do a rock band again at some point? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's funny you say that. That's sort of where my head is right now. You know, because cause here I am, I'm making this other record, and I don't know, I'm, I'm already like four records in, it's like, dude, that's just going to be another record about me, that's kind of boring, you know, I was like, how does one kind of get to start fresh again, because you only get that one shot to have your debut record, you know what I mean, and I'm like, man, I guess I'm going to just have to start a band or something, you know, and yeah, kind of like, like Jeff Tweedy does a Wilco, or a Greg does a Raining Sound, or whatever, it's like, man, I want to, I think I want to start a band next, and I want it to rock. And you know, and I won't. Do you think? It, I mean, it, and we're not talking like a solo band, like Mark Edgar Stewart and the. Uh, I, I kind of want the camaraderie again. You know what I mean? Like I, just, I, I kind of miss that because, because in the old days I was just a bass player for everybody else. But I kind of want to do that again, and 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 you know maybe be kind of drive the ship eighty percent. You know, and, but but I really kind of want to get have a band again. You do you know? think you could go back to not being the the person in charge, like the decider? The person who gets the you know the deciding vote could you go back to that? I don't know. Maybe I think so. It depends if I'm the right people, you know, if I'm with the right folks. But I've been another thing. If I get with the right people, man, I just I would like to be kind of a democracy sort of because I don't know. I kind of miss that. I miss starting a band and 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 the and the people and all that kind of business. And I feel like I want to maybe do that again, you know. And and when I do, it kind of be something a little bit different. Maybe kind of rock a little more, be more upbeat and fun. You know? Yeah. So. Maybe get to play my electric guitar a little bit, make some noise. I'll bust this guy out. Bust out the chips in here. 
didn't you have a band with Greg Cartwright going? Yeah, yeah. So, dude, that was going to be awesome. We, we had a little super group going. That was me and Greg Cartwright. Uh, uh, you say was going to be. Yeah, it was. It, it, it's not happening. It's, it's been postponed. What, ha- what happened well, there? Was, I mean, uh, is it because of he's got too busy with other stuff? I think everybody or? got busy. It, it, it was Marcella. It was uh, uh, Alex Green, uh, uh, Krista, myself, and Greg, and, and, and Dustin. And, uh, oh, uh, that is kind of a super group. Yeah, yeah, man. And we do. We 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 worked it that hard. We we did one for that about three or four months, just learning songs. And man, you know, Greg is like is one of my idols. I've been a super fan of Greg since like the early days, since the '90s, since Oblivions. And it's funny. A lot of folks are like, really? I don't see that. Like, man, I I love the rock. You know, I, I love Greg. I love Jack. I well, I still Jack remember your Greg. first solo record. It was it was a rock. It was actually a rock. Oh record. yeah, that one. Yeah, that that yeah, one yeah. doesn't count. That's unofficial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The butt rock record. Yeah, yeah. No, I just love that. So I love Jack. I love Greg. I've always admired them from afar. And and I got to know Jack a little bit and played with Jack and did a few records. But I never I never knew Greg. You know. And but I always sort of liked it that way. So I, I don't know if I want to get to know him. I can just be the fan from afar. You know. And that's how it's been for twenty years. And then then he he approached me like two years ago about this project, play bass. It's like, well, let's do it. So yeah, we did this project. It was called what was Welk the Stall. Name? Say it again. Welk Stall. Welk Stall. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And and, and you uh, played at like, you played one gig that yeah, I did. Two gigs. That was it. Okay. The band had. And two I missed them both. Big gigs. We we played cross town, and then we did a uh, uh, the Montessori the River Series downtown. Two fantastic gigs. They're awesome, and they were m- most of Greg's song. There were there's some co writes here. Me and Greg co write one tune, which is going to be on my record. Uh, yeah, the group was great. It was kind of like a more of acoustic or more of acoustical side of Greg, you know, like like it was acoustic guitar. It was it was Krista playing the the, the violin. It was Marcella doing percussion, and 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 uh, man, it was it was a cool group. And I think you know Greg, he's got a lot of things going, and I think it just sort of got postponed for a little bit. So it wouldn't. Yeah, he and Krista have some other new band. Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't. Not, not not really any drama, you know. He just said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go down this avenue. Let's just postpone this for a little bit." So. So hopefully we'll get that thing going. Greg, if you're listening, let's get that thing going. I learned all those songs, man. Those are incredible songs. Those are a thousand chords, and and uh, uh, I know them. I want to go play them for somebody. Yeah, I feel that. Do you dude can any- write a song, man. Dude can write a song, man. Just the most beautiful chords you've ever heard. It's like, dude, how do you do that? I want to steal some of that. You know, my favorite Raining Sound, or my favorite of his records in general, is the Raining Sound album, Too Much Guitar. Mm-hmm. Which which is a jam. I mean, it's but it's it's one of his noisier records. I remember that came out, man. It was just yeah. like, what the f, man? Like, well, it's partially it's, produced by Jay Jay Riotar yeah. and and Alicia. So I remember the first one what was it, Break yeah. Up Break Down. That's the one that just rocked my world. Like uh, that's just kind of like the soundtrack of my twenties, hanging out the high tone and falling in and out of love. And and then uh, the second one, Time Bomb High School, came out. And I remember. I remember I got an advanced copy. Corey had an advanced copy of it. Back when I had blank CDs all over the place. I did. You want to hear the new ring sound? Here it is. I don't think it was even mastered yet. Not sure how he had it. So I remember listening to Time Bomb High School uh, unmastered for like six months. Incredible. Love that record. And I remember when Too Much Guitar came out, I was like, whoa, what just happened here, man? You know? I love it. It was just a completely different kind of kind of a sound. And that's what I love about Greg. It's like every, every raining sound record is different. There's a different vibe, you know? And I remember when he came out with the one, he moved and got with a new band. And I think I was, uh, was it Shattered? The one that came out about five years ago. And it kind of had strings. It was more acoustic y. And I remember thinking, man, I really dug that. And I, I love Shattered. That's a great record. And then he came back here and did the one with, with Graham and, the, and kind of the Memphis lineup. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just a big fan of Greg. I'm just kind of like a fanboy. Yeah. No, I mean, he's a beloved figure I in mean, town he, for he, a reason. He's a cool dude. And. Just real sweet, real nice, man. He, he he was very nice to me, very complimentary. Well, before I let you go, I mean, it, it took us a while to get this together. I, I'm, I'm curious, and I don't know how much you even want to get into the reasons why it took us a long time to get this together from when uh, we started talking about it in December to now. But uh, you know, uh, things going okay for you? Are you doing all right? Yeah, man. Just just a lot of, a lot of life stuff, you know. So so. Uh, uh, about the past three or four months, you know, I uh, uh, my mom's getting older, so so you know, my mom had a few little 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 health run-ins and scares, and and we're still doing dealing with that. I was I was doing a songwriter festival out in uh, New Mexico in August, and I got the phone call that she had you know she had a, had an aneurysm, so oh, that's never good. Yeah, I was like, oh boy, I gotta try to get on the airplane and get back to get back to Pine Bluff. But anyway, she she wound up surviving, which is great, and then that's just kind of turned into other things, you know, you you. 
when you get 87, you sort of fall apart a little bit. So I've just kind of been dealing with all that and getting removed out of her house and, you know, and getting removed into like a little assisted living place. And then in the middle of all that, my dog dies, you know, like oh, my man. beloved dog. So a whole lot of life in the past couple of months. Like, damn it. I have know? this written down. I didn't know how much you would even want to get into it, but you know, I'm someone I, I lost, uh, you know, me and my wife had uh, a pair of cats for 15 and, and 17 years, respectfully. We lost the first one in 2000, right when the pandemic started. And we lost the last, the second one um, in, I guess, late 22. And, uh, you know, I still have dreams about them. I still, I still cry mm-hmm. when I just randomly think about them. Yep. It's, it's, man, it's, it's a powerful thing man it's like 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 like, no disrespect to my dad like i I didn't cry this much when my dad died you know what i mean oh man same but i I lost i mean i I had a rough relationship with my dad so there's a whole different thing there but i mean i i get upset about my cats about max and grace you know on a weekly basis at least if not more i get it 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 tore i mean i'm in this room now move that door right there the other way but those are Joe's little 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 nose marks right there. Oh man. Yeah, because I would always kind of close the door, and then and then he'd come in here and look at me and try to push the door open, you know, because I'm in here writing songs, and and you know, and then now I'm in here writing songs, and there's no one trying to get in, you know. And I look over there, and it's like I, I'll never clean that 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 window pane right there. You can relate. It's just yeah. Like, I can't I can't do it. I got a, a, a the shirt I was wearing, the pants I was wearing, which is a brand new pair of jeans, is like. I can't get myself to wash it. I just put it in the bottom drawer, <laughs> you know, because I was, thought that was the clothes I had on when I had, had to go put them down, you know. So. Oh, yeah. Grief is a weird thing, man, you know, but things like that, it's like, for, for, for weeks, I couldn't even look at that without crime. Now I'm like, I'm cool. I got this. That's all right. Yeah, but, at a certain point, you know, it crosses over into like you're sort of, sort of comforted by the sight of those things and seeing pictures and. You know, and the vet, they, they send you the paw print or whatever. They yeah, yeah, I got that up there. You yeah. know, totally. But yeah, man. I, 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 it, I, I, but it, it it's taken me a long time to get to where I could even talk about it like yeah. this. No, I, I, I get it. I, I get it, man. And, that's, and it was funny. It's like you have all these people like, it's just a dog or it's just a cat. It's like, well, you just haven't had that special animal mm. yet. I've had a lot of dogs, you know, yeah. and... and but, but, and I love them all, but this was, this, Joe got me through some stuff, man. Like, like, Joe got me through, 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 through being cancer, being sick, losing my, my dad, all that. Like, Joe was always there, you know, stuff with me and my wife, you know, and like, Joe was just there. He was just, the dude just knew us. He, just, he, was, he was in like, one of your songs, the, yeah. the Hope Joe is Enough. Yep. Yeah. That, you know, so he was a real big part of my life and even my little creative process. And, and I knew it was just going to, you know, when you lose animals, it's like a chapter is closed. Like, well, that's, that yeah. was a whole chapter of life. What's next? You know, so it's scary. But at the same time, it's like, all right, what's next? Here we go. Yeah. So. When when I saw that it happened, I, my heart went out to you just a, immediately. I was, you know, I was I was really, you know, sorry Man. to hear it. No, thank you, thank you. And I'm sorry about to hear hear about your cats. Oh, appreciate I'm, it. I need a haven't haven't had a, a, a that cat yet. Maybe that's what's next for me is a cat. A cat journey. Yeah, I've never had the, the the cat journey yet. They're cool. They're cool. If you keep them inside, you don't have to spend as much money on vets with cats. Yeah, and I know Steve is way into cats. Yeah, like man, if you man. get the right cat, they're they're super sweet. I, I mean, I have a cat now who's kind of an aloof, yeah. you know, son of a bitch. But uh, you yeah, know, yeah, I still I'm love him. Out. Maybe that's the next chapter for me is a cat. <laughs> that you can do your cat album. Yeah, we well we got a neighborhood cat here called Sir Donut. Who just walks the street? It's a you know Natalie Jones. See those on the corner, and it's her cat, Sir Donut. And he's That's like a great name for a cat, isn't it? Yeah. And, and this Sir Donut's everybody's cat. Like the whole entire street, the, the cat's like a thousand pounds now because the whole entire street like feeds a dude. But man, when I come home after gigs, and I can hear Sir Donut just comes up just like a dog. Meow. What up? Jumps up on my car hood. I pet Sir Donut, and he, and he moves on. Now I look at my Instagram, see Sir Donuts paid someone else a, a visit down the road. You know, everybody thinks that it's. Sir Donut, Sir Cat, but nah, he's belongs in alley down the street, but he's just a cool dude. <laughs> you and you and the wife are all all good health wise. Yeah, yeah, she she still was dealing with some things, you know, and 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 me, I need a, I need a, I, I'm fine. I'm just that's, like we we're talking earlier, man. This uh, got unhealthy the past six months. It's easy to do, you know. It's very easy to do. So you know, I'm just trying to like New Year. Here we go. What am I gonna do about this? You know. So just. Anyway, no one wants to hear me talk about that. But, you know, you just start putting on a few LBs and your bones ache a little bit and 
your doctor tells you you got high cholesterol, and it's like, well, what are you going to do about it? So that's what I'm doing right now. So oh, I uh, I, DDP yoga, I recommend it. It'll okay. get you some increased flexibility. I mean, you look great, man. I got uh, I, I, I to get on what you're doing, man. Thank you. That's, that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, last thing I want to ask you about before I'll let you go is uh, we recorded – at Shangri-La back in December, a mm-hmm. live set of yours, which is going to be available for everyone to listen to in full or, and watch, watch or listen to in full at the Shangri-La Records YouTube channel. And we're going to hear a song from that in the podcast here now called Throw Rocks at Your Window. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, I was yeah. hoping you could maybe just introduce the song a little bit and, you know, just tell us, you know. Yeah, Throw Rocks at Your Window. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wrote that over the pandemic. Uh, of course, it was a it was a, a, a negative forty eight degrees outside. You know, it was right in that, that the crazy winter we had. And and uh, I, I guess the memory I have of that song is I can remember a time growing up, and, and y'all then too probably before we had these cell phones and all that business. Of you know you you got this this this, this love interest, you know, and you go into her house and and you wanted to come outside, and you're out there kind of like throwing rocks at the window. Now, She's on I the ne- second floor. You know? I never actually I know what you're talking about. I'm not trying to break the window out. I'm just trying to say, hey, yeah, yeah. I'm down here. Well, that's what happens yeah. in the comedy movie, though, is that they, they don't, you know, the first few taps don't work, so they throw one harder, and then it breaks the yeah, window. Yeah, 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 But But that, that's kind of the gist of it. It's just like, man, I'm out here. Come on down, you know? So That's cool. And the song takes a few other turns, too. I took a few artistic liberties, like like we're allowed to do sometimes. But, yeah, I like it. I recorded that with, with, with Pete and Toby a couple years ago. I was always Toby's favorite song. Well, we'll hear the live version now, and you can hear the the full performance again at the Shangri-La Records YouTube channel. Mark, thanks for taking a minute. Thanks for having us over. Absolutely, man. Thank you all for coming, man. It was fun. Yeah, Yeah. this was great. See if I can remember this. I haven't done this in a year. It's got a lot of chords, y'all. Goes out to Toby if he's still here. Street lights are on, I'm back again. It's cold outside. I said it once, I say it again. It's cold outside. I can barely feel my toes through the storm. I draw. Can you hear me down below? Going rocks at your me out here in the cold, throwing rocks at you. 